Good day to you all and welcome back to Bugs and Biology. Today's video is going to be nice and short, just showing off a couple of my critters. First up, we have this very nicely coloured centipede. This is a Scolopendra morsitans from Western Australia. Scolopendra morsitans is Australia's second biggest centipede behind Ethmostigmus rub ripes, or third biggest if you count Cormocephalus coini, seeing as Phillip Island is technically Australian territory. Depending on locality, this species seems to vary quite significantly in size. And on top of that, it exhibits an astonishingly diverse array of colour variants. This particular colour form is nicknamed the Flame Leg, for reasons that I don't think I need to point out. And honestly, my camera does not appear to have done the best job at capturing its coloration. Its legs in particular are a noticeably more vibrant shade of red towards the front. Now, as you should be able to tell, this centipede is pretty chill. And I have been working with him a little bit. Not much, I think that this may be the third or so time I've handled him. But we are starting to uh, get acquainted with one another. Even within a species, you will find that individual temperament with centipedes can vary quite a lot. And while Scolopendra morsitans generally aren't overly bad tempered, you will get the occasional individual who is just a bit nasty. This one is mostly a very relaxed centipede. That being said, he is distinctively nervous about touching new surfaces, which made it quite difficult to get him onto my hand, at least at first. Oftentimes, when presented with an unfamiliar surface, he will either turn around or simply sit still. The possibility of a bite is, of course, always something that one has to consider if they're going to handle centipedes. And if you handle them on a regular basis, then a bite is less of a possibility and more of an eventuality. Centipedes, thankfully, are often rather conservative when it comes to their venom, and in many instances will not envenomate anywhere close to their full ability, and dry bites are not an infrequent occurrence whatsoever. If you've watched my centipede bite video, then you will have a very good idea of what I'm talking about here. But when a centipede does decide to give you a proper envenomation, well, it is unlikely to be something you'll be forgetting anytime soon. Some of you may have been able to already tell, due to the conspicuous lack of handling videos on my channel lately, but this is the first of my pet centipedes that I have handled in quite a while. And that is because I've had a lot of bad luck in the temperament department, because it is something of a lucky draw. And while this centipede is, as I said before, a little bit nervous, he is still quite a placid individual, and is more than willing to settle down and rest right in the middle of my palm. Now, moving on to something quite different. This is Megacrania batesii, easily one of the most stunningly coloured stick insects that we have anywhere in Australia. As you can tell from the fact that her wings are still buds, this female is not yet fully grown. That being said, she should be pretty close. These awe-inspiring insects come from the rainforests of tropical North Queensland. Now, there's a lot of plants up there, surely you'd think these guys would be spoiled for choice. But no, there is only one thing that these insects eat, and that is Pandanus. Pandanus leaves are incredibly tough and often quite spiky, 
And while this means they are hardly the most pleasant plant to feed on, it also ensures that these stick insects face very little competition for their food supply. I will admit though that I'd rather they ate something else. Harvesting pandanus leaves is not the most enjoyable of tasks. You may also be wondering exactly where the common name for these insects come from. Peppermint stick insect, what could that possibly be about? Well, the answer is their defence mechanism. When sufficiently provoked, especially if approached from behind, these insects will spray a fluid at their perceived threat. A fluid which happens to smell very strongly of peppermint. The liquid is largely harmless to humans, though it is definitely something you want to keep away from your eyes. To a smaller animal, however, it can be a much more effective deterrent. And it looks like we're coming to the end of this video. So this video was fairly short, and ultimately it doesn't seem like much compared to some of the other stuff I've posted recently. However, while I really enjoy filming the more longer, informative videos, they require quite a lot of effort. Not only is there the whole filming and editing thing, but I have to do a fair amount of research beforehand. And having quite a busy schedule at university lately, videos like that are simply not something I can post on a very regular basis. As such, it's quite important for me to be able to have shorter videos like this to give me a little bit of a break. Well, with that being over, it's really time to wrap this video up. So if you enjoyed my content, then feel free to check out some of my other uploads and don't forget to subscribe. So thank you all very much for watching, that is it from me and I'll see you again very soon.